Hey guys, Sean here at the Gardener Center. So this week I want to talk to you about um, two different species of Aschlepius that I have here with me. Um, Aschlepius are collectively known as milkweeds. Um, this one on the left is Aschlepius incarnata, which is known as the swamp milkweed. And this one over here is Aschlepius tuberosa, which is commonly known as butterfly weed. Before I get to the plants, just a couple thoughts on the names. Um, a lot of our native plants have very unfortunate common names. And with that being, you know, the word weed is often attached to the plant's name. We can blame colonial farmers for that. Um, people came here three, 400 years ago. They were experiencing and seeing plants they were not familiar with because they didn't occur in Europe. And they began farming right away. And, you know, generally speaking, a weed is a plant that's growing somewhere that you don't want it to be growing. And that was particularly true in cultivated plots where you were growing corn or something like that. So anything that popped up where, you, where a crop or a food crop was being grown was a weed. And these plants were new to everyone and they needed names. So they would just pick out a characteristic and say, well, butterflies like this one. So that's butterfly weed. And this one, when you cut it, that white milky stuff comes out so this became milkweed and that's how these plants got some terrible names um don't be afraid about the word weed they just threw that word around everywhere everything was everything that was growing in a food plot was a weed um it's not a weed if you plant it on purpose which you guys should be doing with these milkweeds um so these guys Great plants for pollinators, um, specifically for monarch butterflies. Everybody knows that uh, milkweed is essential for, for monarchs. Um, but they're, they're good for different parts of the landscape. So hopefully you have a spot in your yard where you can have each kind. So the swamp milkweed over here, like I said, Aschlepius incarnata. This is a good plant for a wet area of the yard. Um, it doesn't have to be swampy, though. These are very adaptable and they can grow in what I would describe as like an ordinary garden situation. So any perennial bed that you irrigate, maybe you have flocks or irises or, you know, black eyed Susans, that sort of thing. These would mix well in there. Um, these are a well-behaved garden plant. They're gonna actually behave just like a garden flocks would or summer flocks. Um, they don't spread around um, by rhizomes or runners. They just grow in a nice clump. Um, they grow about three to four feet tall. Um, pink flowers start the, usually the very beginning of July, and they go right through until um, September. Um, this one here, um, monarch butterflies love the nectar of the flowers in both of them, as do bees and um, wasps and beetles and moths. They're super great pollen source for, for native insects. Um, this is the one that's more preferable as a food source for the caterpillars. In a pinch, if you're rearing um, monarch butterfly caterpillars at home and you need food for them, in a pinch you can use the, um, the butterfly weed. They will eat this, but this one's preferred. Um, so if you only have room for one of them, this would be the good one to do. Um, this is the one where you're going to get your monarchs to lay eggs. You're going to have your little caterpillars. You're going to get chrysalises. This is the one to have if you have little kids at home or if you have little kids to come and visit with you during the summertime, this is, this is the real fun one to have. Wet spot, three to four feet tall. This guy here occurs in most of the United States as a native. The only places where this plant does not grow naturally are Mississippi, Arizona, and the uh, Pacific Ocean states. It occurs everywhere in the United States as a native, so if you're gardening with natives, and specifically unadulterated, just straight species natives. This guy's a winner over here. Aschlepius tuberosa over here, completely different from this one. Um, Aschlepius tuberosa likes to grow in a hot, dry, sunny area. Wet over here, dry over here. These guys, again, occur naturally throughout most of the United States, the entire eastern seaboard, the Midwest. The only place these guys don't occur is in the far west in the northwestern part of the country. But these guys like open, sunny, gravelly, sandy, rocky situations where you don't irrigate. So this is a great drought tolerant plant. This one is beloved by butterflies. And these guys are typically in orange or yellow shades. 
pink over here, hot oranges and yellows over here. A little shorter than this one, um, grows uh, maybe two to three feet tall, two to three feet wide. Super hardy though, just like this one, as far as cold is concerned, these guys are gonna go down to 40, 50 below zero without a problem. Key to success with this one though, is this one needs that well-drained soil. These guys won't, won't make it through the winter if they're in like a heavy clay or a wet soil in the winter time. So Aschlepius tuberosa, the butterfly weed for hot and dry sunny spot in the yard. Question that we get often asked at this time of year about milkweeds, this phone will start ringing every day, is about the little orange bugs that appear all over, specifically the um, swamp milkweed and the butterfly weed. And that's these little, um, these little orange vampires that start to appear all over your milkweed. And these are aphids, they're called aphis nerii. And believe it or not, these aphids, like so many other bugs, are not indigenous to the United States. They were introduced here from the Mediterranean long ago. And interestingly enough, in the Mediterranean, their host plant is oleander which is also a super toxic plant, just like the Aschlepius is. So they got to the North America and they had to find something to eat here and Aschlepius became their new best friend. And it's, it's cool because they, just like the monarchs, you know, they're feeding on a poisonous plant, which then makes the aphids poisonous to predators and things that may eat them. So they're kind of tough to control, like with ladybugs and stuff like that, because a lot of times ladybugs won't eat them because they have the Aschlepius toxins in them. So a couple of good things, a couple of good things to keep in mind here. Number one, when pe most people are growing Aschlepius, they tend to monitor them pretty closely. You know, we're always out looking for little monarch eggs and little caterpillars which we don't do to most of our garden plants. So if you're monitoring your Aschlepius closely, you want to keep an eye out for those little orange aphids. Um, they almost always appear on the tips of the growth, the tender new growth at the top. And the best thing to do is monitor for them and get rid of them as soon as you see them. Um, you don't wanna let their populations build up and you don't want to use uh, pesticides on your Aschlepius. Even the ones that are labeled organic, a lot of the organic ones for um, aphids are just an oil of some type, but we don't know what could happen to the monarch eggs or the teeny tiny baby caterpillars if you're using an oil spray. So the very best remedy for these aphids is simply to monitor for them. If you see them, like I said, they're usually right at the tips of the plant. I have a couple here on one of my plants here. And what you do is just go down an inch or two below where they are, snip them off and put them in the garbage where they belong. Um, that's the best way to get rid of these aphids here. If you do get a severe infestation, you may get them all down one stem or a couple stems. Cut the whole stem down to the ground. Um, these milkweeds are very vigorous plants. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna bounce right back from them. If you want, a lot of times, a lot of times there may be monarch caterpillars or eggs on the stems that you cut off. If you want to squish the aphids with your fingers and try to move the eggs or the caterpillar babies to other plant, parts of the plant, that's good to do too. But like I said, don't, um, don't use pesticides on your Aschlepius. It kind, of, it kind of defeats the whole purpose. But one more time, wet and sunny over here hot and sunny over here with the butterfly weed. Um, I hope you have a spot in your yard to try them both. Um, guys, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.